2023 was the worst year ever for the U.S. residential solar market. Whether it's higher interest rates or dealer fees, or contractors just doing terrible work and giving the industry a bad reputation, for a number of reasons, 2023 was the worst year ever that I can remember in the solar industry. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining the five factors that contributed to the 2023 solar market crash and what we need to do in 2024 to fix it. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find product reviews and comparisons of solar panels, batteries, inverters, uh, pretty much any piece of technology that makes up a home renewable energy system. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the five factors that contributed to the 2023 solar market crash and what we need to do as an industry to turn things around. Now, the first factor, of course, is higher interest rates. Whether it's auto loans, home mortgage loans, or solar loans, the interest rates that consumers had to pay in 2023 rose considerably and steadily throughout the entire year. Now, this is important in solar because most home solar power systems are not purchased with cash. Rather, typically what happens is a solar loan is established. And these solar loans will typically have long terms, like 15, 20, 25 years, some even 30 years long now. And the idea with the solar loan is to get the monthly payment of the solar loan financing to the same level or below what the old electric bill would be. So this is why you might have heard something about free solar program. Well, the, the only thing that made it free was that the amount that you were able to save on your monthly electric bill by offsetting the electric bill with solar energy uh, was lower than what your solar loan finance payment was going to be uh, after you purchased the system. And so that, that math and that sales pitch worked if you had low interest rates at 2%, 3%, 4%. But what we saw by the end of 2023 is interest rates on solar loans had risen in some cases to 9, 10, 11, and 12% interest. And so of course, when the interest rates increased that much, the monthly payment that an end user or a consumer would have to pay for a solar loan, uh, in many cases ended up being higher than what their old electric bill was. So there, there really was no short-term compelling interest to want to go solar. Now, the other factor, of course, is the higher dealer fees. And dealer fees are a part of the solar financing equation that a lot of times people want to just pretend doesn't exist. But when we're talking about dealer fees, what we're talking about is fees that the contractor has to pay to the finance company for the origination of the loan. So you can think of these kind of like closing costs when you're purchasing a home with a mortgage. However, unlike a home mortgage where traditional closing costs might be in the two to 3% range of the total mortgage amount, in solar financing or in solar loans, you could have dealer fees that were 20, 25, or 30% of the total loan amount. Uh, meaning that you know of your total solar purchase price, up to 30% of that could be taken right off the top and paid straight to the bank just for them facilitating the loan. Now, part of the reason why the dealer fees had to increase so much was that there have been increasing contractor defaults within the solar industry. And so when I talk about contractor default, what I'm talking about is companies that go out of business, in many cases, having some of the finance companies money already advanced to them for jobs that have not been completed yet. So when you're talking about a solar loan financing company, um, like traditional lenders, they have the risk of the borrower defaulting, right? The borrower borrows cash, and they, they don't pay the loan back. But a solar loan finance company also has the risk of the contractor defaulting. In other words, the contractor may take a draw on a project that's, that's in progress, but not yet complete. If the contractor goes bankrupt or goes out of business, during the course of executing that project, the finance company is at risk of losing that cash as well. Now, the biggest one that we heard about earlier, of course, was the bankruptcy of Pink Energy, formerly known as Power Home Solar. And at the time of their bankruptcy, they had over $30 million of cash advanced to them by Sunlight Financial. And I believe that was one of the major factors that led to Sunlight Financial's bankruptcy in the latter half of 2023. 
So this has been a big problem for the industry. It's part of why the solar finance companies are charging higher dealer fees now to help offset some of that risk of contractors defaulting. Now, the third major trend from 2023, of course, is California's net metering 3.0. And it's called net metering 3.0, but it's really no longer a net metering program. Now, when you we talk about a solar buyback program or a net metering program, the way you want it to work is during daylight hours, when your solar panels are producing excess electricity, that excess electricity can get sent back to the power company for full credit on your bill. So you're essentially banking up kilowatt hours during the daytime hours, and then you wanna be able to pull those kilowatt hours back in during the evening hours. So the excess that you send during daylight balances out what you pull in at the evening time, and so your bill levels out to zero. Well, that's how we would like it to work. But starting in April of 2023, California did away with their one-for-one -one net metering program. And under the new program, you have to export four kilowatt hours. In other words, you have to send the company four units of electricity for every one that you're able to buy back. Uh, so that means that basically that the payback, the financial payback justification for going solar became a lot less compelling. And since California is the trendsetter in terms of solar net metering policy, we've seen a number of other states already follow suit. Ohio, North Carolina, a number of other states are also changing their net metering programs where they're no longer giving consumers that one-for-one -one buyback. Now, what that means is that if you wanna take advantage of being totally energy independent, you're gonna to have to install battery storage with your solar power system, which increases the cost of the solar power system and of course increases the complexity of the installation, which is an issue that the contractors are dealing with. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Now, the fourth major factor contributing to the market slowdown in 2023 was just plain old fashioned bad actor solar contractors. You know, I hate to say it, but solar has gotten a bad reputation and there are these small handful of companies out there that just do business the wrong way. You know, a lot of these companies, they, they look at solar like it's a gold rush. They, they wanna get in as soon as possible because they think there's a lot of money, a lot of profit to be made but they're short-term minded. And so they do things like overcharge customers uh, and then just do poor quality work on the back end. And so we had a number of contractors, particularly in states like Texas and Florida, that came in, they sold a lot of solar systems at inflated prices. They did a lot of quick and dirty, cheap work that led to a number of roof leaks in a, in a few small cases, some electrical fires, uh, to the point where this became a talking point at the Florida insurance company conferences. In fact, a number of Florida insurance companies just dropped homeowners coverage completely once they found out that they had installed solar panels on their roof. And then the fifth major factor here is contractors not yet knowing how to install solar with battery storage as profitably as they know how to install solar panels only. Now folks, when we talk about a solar with battery storage system, it's a completely different animal than installing grid tied solar only. Uh, in many cases, you have to do more detailed load analysis on the home. You may have to rearrange individual circuits within the home or install additional circuit breaker panels. Um, and in some cases, even interface with other equipment like an electric vehicle charger or a generator as well to be able to tie that into one integrated hybrid solar power system. Well, the simple truth is that most of the solar contractors operating on the continental United States are not yet used to installing solar with batteries. It's a very small percentage of the market of what we call the attachment rate. It's a very small percentage of customers that choose to do batteries with their solar. And I know because I've talked to a number of contractors around the country that their preference off the record, their preference is not to have to install batteries at all because they haven't yet learned how to do it profitably. You know, very simply folks, the, the, the process has got to change for how you execute a solar plus storage process compared to just a solar only uh, process. And so the way that you do the site survey is different. The photographs that you have to capture are different. The engineering plans are different and they have to be reviewed differently. And then of course the installation crew has to be trained and equipped differently than when you're talking about a grid tie only system. And frankly, most of the US continental United States contractors haven't caught up yet. So the solution here for you contractors, you installers watching out there is start networking, start getting connected 
with contractors that specialize in doing solar with battery storage. Uh, you're gonna find them in places like Hawaii, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, uh, places where there either is no net metering program or where the power grid is unreliable and so the attachment rate is very, very high and figure out what these contractors have done in terms of their standard operating procedures so that they can install solar with storage as predictably, as profitably as you all have been accustomed to installing solar uh, solar only grid tied systems in the past. Now, if you're a homeowner out there and you're in the process of evaluating contractors to install solar or to install solar with battery storage at your home, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do your homework as well. You know, checking the online reviews is one thing, but what a number of companies do, frankly, is they, they buy the online reviews. Uh, some of them will give little Amazon gift cards to their salespeople and say, here, I'll give you a $25 gift card if you put a, a, a five-star review. In many cases, these reviews are put up before the installation is even complete. A lot of time it's done right at the point of sale. The salesperson is offering to exchange a gift card for a five-star online review. So you've got to really pull back the curtain as much as you can. Look at the financial strength of the contractor if possible, uh, because really what you want to be asking asking yourself is, is this contractor, is this the company that I have confidence in that they're going to be a reliable partner over the next 25 year lifetime of this system? Um, as I've said many times in the past, solar, this is not one of those things that you want to shop on cheapest price. What you really want to be asking yourself is, is this the best partner for me? Is this the company that I have the most confidence in long term? Now, if you're considering installing storage with your solar power system, then making sure that you vet the contractors experience doing not only solar, but doing solar with battery backup as well is important. Uh, I would recommend ask for a couple of references uh, or maybe an installation that's in your neighborhood that you can drive by or a homeowner that you can talk to to verify that they actually do have the experience installing solar with battery storage and the kind of complex system design that you might be considering. So folks, this has been a brief summary of the five factors contributing to the solar market crash in 2023. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that we have here on Solar Surge, make sure you give, give us that thumbs up. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have these new videos coming up, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're in the process of evaluating solar power options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or if you maybe already have a price quote and need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and getting the best deal, uh, as always, you can feel to reach out to us on the link below there. You can either use our free solar calculator tool on the website uh, or set up a call with a solar expert so that we can talk over your needs and then get some pricing and some information for you. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.